This is School of the Seers, one of my favorite things to teach. Of course, I love teaching anything the Lord tells me to teach. And this is our third year here in this. And he gave me an idea a couple, two, three months ago, dream misinterpretation. I've taught entire schools and wrote entire books on dream interpretation. I've got one out there called Decoding Your Dreams. And so I've taught a lot on dream interpretation, gone around the world teaching on dream interpretation. And the Holy Spirit put it to me this way, dream misinterpretation. Because a lot of people are getting it wrong. And there are certain ways in which we get it wrong. We misinterpret. If we misinterpret, we'll misapply. If we misapply, we'll miss it. We'll miss it in our lives. We could miss God's direction. We could miss God's leading. We could just, we just miss it. So, you know, misinterpretation. So Acts 2, 17 says, this is what I will do in the last days. I will pour out my spirit on everybody. Other translations say on all flesh. And cause your sons and daughters to prophesy. And your young men will see visions. And your old men will experience dreams from God. That's the Passion Translation, a little more modern. So a lot of people are having dreams and visions. A lot of people are having more dreams and visions than they ever had before. Some people that have never had God dreams are having God dreams now frequently. This is what God is doing in this hour. And I believe as we go deeper into the end times, people will have dreams and visions more and more. As a matter of fact, I think we're going to need to rely on this type of prophetic communication more and more. God wouldn't have said it if he wasn't going to do it. And so this, 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 Prophecy from Joel, see here, this, this is Peter, and he's re-prophesying Joel's prophecy. He's basically saying, this is that, this is the time. But I believe that the prophetic, uh, the prophetic movement was, began to be restored in the 1980s. That doesn't mean there were no prophets before the 1980s. It just means that God began to breathe on the prophetic movement and focus on equipping people once again to hear the voice of God for themselves and to prophesy out of that simple gift of prophecy. As we've seen prophets proliferate, now we're seeing seers rising up. And I've been teaching a lot on that over the last several years. Uh, but I believe it's as, as we go deeper and deeper, it's more and more important that we hear the voice of God for ourselves, no matter how it comes, whether it's dreams, visions, still small voice, faint impressions, because there's many modes of communication. So I've taught a lot on dream interpretation, but... It occurred to me that if you could understand how, how, how you can miss it, if you understand the ways that you'll, you could potentially miss it, maybe you won't miss it as much. Maybe you'll get it more right. So, Father, today as we dive into this last session, can you help us, Lord, to stay focused and tracking with your spirit so that we can learn what we need to learn so we can avoid a derailment in our dream life? We want to interpret accurately. We want to rightly divide the word of truth. So help us to, to, to see these ways in which we can go off the rails and give us boundaries with which to interpret according to your spirit, because the interpretation belongs to you in Jesus name. Amen. So now some dreams require very little interpretation. We know that some dreams, most dreams are parabolic and symbolic. But some dreams can be literal or they can carry a message that is very direct. That's not most dreams. But I would be remiss if I didn't mention that. For example, Joseph had four dreams in the New Testament, pop, 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 right after one another with angels giving him prophetic direction about Jesus. Go down to Egypt, come out of Egypt. And so these were, this is clear. There was no interpretation. There wasn't time for that. There was, God needed to, needed Joseph to do this now. You know, angel, you know, he had a dream and the angel said, go now. There was no time for him to sit there and try to get a dream dictionary and parse through all the symbols. It was just, poof, that's it. But most dreams aren't like that. And here, here's what we have to understand. The very first key to all of this, which most people seem to forget, is Genesis verse 40. One through eight. And the Bible says, it came to pass after these things, this is when Joseph was in prison, that the butler and the baker of the king of Egypt offended their Lord, the king of Egypt. And Pharaoh was angry with his two officers and the chief butler, the chief baker. 
So he put them in custody in the house of the captain of the guard in the prison, the place where Joseph was confined. Verse 4, and the captain of the guard charged Joseph with them, and he served them, so they were in custody for a while. Verse 5, then the butler and the baker of the king of Egypt, who were confined in the prison, had a dream. Both of them, each man's dream in one night, and each man's dream with its own interpretation. And Joseph came in to them in the morning and looked at them, and he saw that they were sad. So he asked Pharaoh's officers who were with him in the custody of his Lord's house, saying, why do you look so sad today? And they said to him, we each have had a dream, and there's no interpreter of it. So Joseph said to them, do not interpretations belong to God. Tell them to me, please. And that's the crux of it. So um, the, the interpretation belongs to God. We have to understand that. He is the master interpreter of our dreams. So here we see there was no misinterpretation. Uh, there was just, uh, so, so uh, where I'm skipping ahead here. New Living Translation says, Interpreting dreams is God's business. The CEV says, doesn't God know the meaning of the dreams? The Good News Translation says, it is God who gives the ability to interpret dreams. And the good God's Word Translation says, isn't God the only one who can tell what they mean? He is. He is the, if, if he is the source of the dream, he has the perfect interpretation it shouldn't and he's not trying to hold it back from you now he might hold some of it back from you because if you knew the meaning of some of it you might freak out and get ahead of God you might be afraid of you know what God has a plan but he will tell you what you need to know about the dream he will he will tell you he will show you that is his job it's not mentioned you know the Holy Spirit is our advocate our intercessor our standby the amplified Bible really draws out who the Holy Spirit is and all his different functions you know he's also a dream interpreter He's also a dream interpreter. So let's talk about, in that context, some dream interpretation mistakes, some common mistakes. Hearing something in the spirit. I hope it's in the spirit because it's a hissing noise. Actually, that would be bad because that would mean it's a snake. Ha So I bind all the snakes in Jesus' name. I break the powers of witchcraft in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now we can really get started. Okay. Common dream interpretation mistakes. The first one is, seems rather obvious, but apparently it's not obvious to most people. The first mistake is assuming every dream comes from God. Assuming every dream comes from God. There are, you, you have to judge the source of the dream. You got to judge it. You always have to judge it. Now, some dreams aren't hard to source because if it's a nightmare, you know that didn't come from God. But most dreams, you got a source, and it's not always obvious what the source is. So there's three sources, generally speaking, of a dream. There is the enemy, which he can um, show you his plans. These are called second heaven dreams because the enemy is showing you his plans and his purposes. There's also nightmares, which can be manifested in a second heaven dream, or it can just be him tormenting your soul. A lot of people have forgiveness, unforgiveness, they have torment. And when they have torment, then sometimes that torment manifests in their dreams. I call it nocturnal warfare. Nocturnal warfare. The other source of the dream is your carnal nature, your flesh, your soul. A lot of people are dreaming out of their soul right now, and they're attributing it to God. It's a political season. It's COVID-19. People are like probably watching the news more than ever right now. And so they're just being consumed. They're letting their minds be renewed with all this stuff. And they're, it's coming out through their dreams. And they're thinking it's God showing them the end of the world. And it's not. It's not. It might be the end of the world as we know, but it's not the end of the world. So there's carnal dreams. Those happen when you take NyQuil and eat pizza before you go to bed. When you're, when you're worried about something and you, know, you can't get it off your mind, those kind of things. And the NyQuil dreams, I don't like those. Then there is the, um, the God dreams, which I like. It, when it's a God dream, you usually can't shake it. Sometimes when it's an enemy dream, you can't shake it because that's fear. When it's a God dream, you just keep remembering it. You, it keeps coming back to you. It's like almost like the Holy Spirit saying, come on, let's interpret that. Come on, let me show what that means. 
They give you a scripture, Daniel 2, verse 3. And the king said to them, I had a dream, and my spirit is troubled to know the dream. So the dream was nagging him. He just, he just had to get the interpretation. That's one way you know it's a God dream. Another way is because it aligns with biblical principles, uh, the emotions that you had when you woke up. It, there's too much to, to dive down that road too deep. Um, but here's the scripture I wanted to tell you with all the reading of the news, all the watching of entertainment, all the things we allow through our, our soul gate. Ecclesiastes 5 verse 3, for a dream comes with much busyness and a fool's voice with many words. So the more you busy yourself about worldly things, the more that that infiltrates your mind. 